Hello, Dealey, and welcome to Something Edible. You know, I bet every family has that one cookie recipe that uh, they have to make every year for the holidays. And for us, that one cookie recipe that everyone always waits for is a chocolate mint cookie. Uh, the recipe that I have actually calls it the best chocolate mint cookies, and they're pretty good. And each one of them has a melted uh, Andes mint on top of it. They're just, they're super. I'm, so today I'm going to take all these ingredients and I'm going to show you how to make the best chocolate mint cookies. Let's get to the stove and get started. Okay, to begin with, we're over medium heat, we're going to add a stick and a half of butter to a medium saucepan. That's three quarters of a cup. We're also going to add 10 ounces of dark brown sugar. If you're doing this the way that most people measure, which isn't by weight, by volume, that's going to be a cup and a half uh, firmly packed. And uh, I'm also going to add uh, my salt right now, which is a half teaspoon, maybe a little more. Salt always helps chocolate, and that's where we're going with this. And then I'm also going to add two and a half tablespoons of just plain old H2O. So over medium heat, we're going to let this melt a little bit and uh, we're going to bring this just to a bubble. As you can see, this stuff is to a boil. So I've killed the heat and uh, you want to take this off the burner if you can. And this stuff is wicked hot, so be careful. But to that, we're going to add our uh, chocolate chips now and it's 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's a uh, standard bag, pretty much. So what we want to do here is we want to let these melt and bring the temperature of this uh, proto-caramel down a little bit. So we're going to take that off the heat, and we're going to let it melt and uh, integrate just a few minutes here. All right, so we stir this to integrate just a little bit. And then if I stick a thermometer in here, It looks like we are registering about eh, about 162, 165. That's still a little bit hot because we need to add eggs to this. So we're going to transfer this to a mixing bowl and let it go for, we're going to let it cool for another 10 minutes or so until the temperature reaches 160 or lower. Because uh, frankly, scrambled eggs and cookies just don't go together. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and uh, I'm sitting about 150, 155. That's good because uh, eggs won't curdle at that temperature. So we can add the eggs. I'm going to take two eggs. I'm going to beat them just slightly. That's all we need. You actually get the uh, temperature at which an egg will curdle actually goes up if you beat them just a little bit. So I'm going to turn this up to medium speed and slowly bring in this egg. All right, this is looking nice and smooth. We're going to take uh, 12 and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. Uh, if you're not into the whole weighing thing, then go ahead and make it about two and a half cups uh, scooped and leveled. And uh, we're also going to add a uh, teaspoon and a quarter of baking soda to that. And you want to take a whisk and just kind of integrate that together. So now, with the mixer, mixer on stir, we're just going to add this by the spoonful until it's all together. And uh, if you need to stop the mixer and scrape it down a little bit, go ahead and do that. There's what we got now. It's a pretty loose dough, but it's also pretty warm right now. And we need this stuff to set up just a little bit so it handles right and the cookies don't spread like crazy. And so uh, what we're gonna do is, after I get this off the paddle, is we're gonna move this into the fridge for a little bit. Usually it takes about two hours in the fridge to get this to the point where you can actually uh, roll it up into a ball and slap it on a cookie sheet. All right. It's been a couple hours and through the magic of film, we have 
our dough. Now I'm going to take, this is, this is too much right here. Um, about half of this is what I want, but I like the way that this cuts through there. And so what you're looking for, you roll these into a ball and really what you want is about an inch. Um, this one might even be a little bit too big. So yeah, that's, that's about an inch in diameter. That's going to give you about a half ounce of cookie to mess with. And we're going to put these on our uh, silpat with about uh, two inches apart. Go ahead and set your oven for uh, 350 while you're doing this. And uh, it works out pretty good. You'll be able to uh, get an assembly line thing going where you get the cookies racked just about the time that they need to go into the oven. So let's haul some cookies here. All right, so I've got these evenly spaced on my silpat and my oven is ready to go, 350. I'll put these in here. Middle rack. And we're gonna go about uh, 10 to 12 minutes. You don't wanna overcook these. So, you know, start low and work your way up. All right, that's 11 minutes on my timer. They're not gonna look completely done, but that's okay, that's exactly what you want. And if they puffed up more than they spread, then you're doing something right. So we'll do the old switcheroo here. That's ready to go. And now, what we need to do here is, I have 72 individually wrapped, no more, because I unwrapped them all, Andy's mitts. And what you're gonna wanna do to these while they're still on the uh, pan is just place them on there. And you can smush them down a little bit if you want so they don't run off, that's okay. So that's what I'm gonna do to this whole pan. And then after that, we're gonna wait about, we're gonna wait about five minutes. And these mints should be good and melted. And we're gonna spread them around a little bit with a knife to kind of create this uh, mint candy top. And then we'll transfer them to a baking rack to let them finish cooling, if you can wait that long. These are pretty good. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and it doesn't look like they've melted, but trust me, they have. So now it's time to get fancy. I got this toddler knives. You shouldn't give toddlers knives anyway, but it makes a good cookie spreader. So um, we'll just come in here and uh, just kind of give it a swirl. And after I'm done smearing these around, then we're going to carefully transfer these to a cooling rack so they can finish cooling and that chocolate can set up. And uh, I can't wait any longer, so I'm just gonna take this one off the edge. And the chocolate isn't set yet, but I really don't care. Mmm. So, imagine if you will, you've got that edge of the brownie thing going on the outside of this and on the inside it's chocolatey it's fudgy and you get this bite of mint with it and it's just it's a knockout cookie it's a, they're just really good and it's definitely one that uh, you want to keep on the table for Santa Claus I hear he likes them at least he does at our house so if you want to get this recipe for the best chocolate mint cookies you can uh, get it at hdnews.net, the Hayes Daily News' website, or you can get it on my website, somethingedible.com. And uh, if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Facebook or uh, Twitter, and uh, you know you can always see what I'm pinning at Pinterest too. So um, until next time, uh, make your Santa Claus some cookies.